Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. Welcome to my working studio. This is where I spend countless hours a day doing editing for my videos. And hopefully after this episode, I'll be able to do a bit of vlogging here as well. I have some interesting light setups here already. And as you can see, the back is really, really sad looking. For most of 2023, I've been traveling. So I haven't been on top of my plant care in my own home and have not really styled my home in a way that I would feel proud about. So come and of the year I decided to finally do something about it. So in today's episode I'll be styling this entire area so we can have a more visually pleasant area to kind of do more filming and for me to kind of enjoy living and working from home. And by the way I do want to wish you guys a happy holidays ahead and Merry Christmas for those of you celebrating. Now a few criteria here. I want plants here that are going to be happy. There is some spotlights around here that is going to shine some light on these plants. And by the way our Artificial light, no matter what kind of light, do help plants with photosynthesis. And also there's a window to my right here that is providing, I would say, medium indirect light, flooding it into this room here. So the plants here are probably getting somewhere between medium to maybe even bright indirect light, but although I would say it's closer to medium light, realistically speaking. And as you guys know, this, these are actually shelves. This one has light fixture behind it. But the plants that are placed on these shelves will probably have to have the leaves face forward for one beauty, but also because the leaves are actually photosynthesizing. So if I have a plant that is of a rosette type growth pattern and have it under the shelf, it may not do so well, except with this uh, tier over here that has a light on the back here. So it is going to be a bit of a strategic styling session. And I'm only going to work with plants that are already existing in and around my garden so I'm not going to be buying any more plants and this side here is actually quite important area for me I know it looks a little bit unsightly but there's a lot of propagation some of them are going to be for our videos so this is a strategic area where it's getting pretty good light and there's an air conditioning blown this way so the plants are getting like a cool temperature even though they're in these propagation boxes I've got like these baby nepenthes so that have just sprouted uh, in here so I'm not going to be doing much in this area this table is just perpetually going to be a little bit messy but I do enjoy seeing things sprout and grow around this area so I'm gonna leave it at that there's a bit of a, a, a plant area here where I could place different kinds of plants there's a peperomia argaria randomly <laughs> place I'm gonna put it on this ledge so uh, let me see I quite like this here so this is a nice little indoor tree, the Dracaena marginata uh, variegata, and it's growing quite well. It hasn't given me any uh, nasty leaves. In fact, a new vine has um, emerged from the side here. So I'm very excited about having this uh, putting off offshoots and growing here, kind of like a firework off the distance. So this is the right light, the right care, the right watering. So I'm going to leave that here. Next, we've got this beautiful, beautiful beautiful pot of apishkia look at that it's gotten really massive gotten really big and i probably should take off some of these uh, drying leaves and by the way these are signs of overwatering. Uh, it's very mushy and also it's like uh, a yellow bit of yellowing with crispy edge if it was underwatering, it would just be a crispy edge without any of that uh, yellowing on it so I have these propagated all the time. I just love starting them over from little cuttings. And if you watch my videos, I have been propagating a lot of this. It's basically, you could just place like some of these runners off to like uh, into another pot and it's just gonna take off. This is such, so, such an easy plant to propagate. But as you can see here, the top is balding. So I might actually move some of these vines uh, to have them root on top. Let me see. Oh my gosh, this is a little bit unruly. I might actually, this is not real. This is like a fake plant. So let me see if this looks good all the way up here because this is a plant that can actually handle that low light up there. Let me actually try to uh, let the leaves trail off to the other side. Kind of like that, kind of style it a bit. Now I have a difficult decision to make and I, until now I really didn't feel like I needed to uh, do something drastic about this. But there are two Skindapsus here. This is the Skindapsus, I think, 
black mamba or one of those and it's like trailing everywhere it's like it's going crazy over here so um i really think that this should be more manageable so I, it doesn't look bad by any means but I, I don't think it's terribly happy here either and i could probably propagate this and turn this into many plants yeah this is very very unruly but let me show you the leaves look at how beautiful this is actually you can feel there's a sort of a 3d quality to the markings this is actually not flat. The leaves are actually quite bumpy. I don't remember the name of this species. And it is not a very common skindapsis, so I feel like I should probably propagate it and give it, I don't know, maybe better care and share it with other people. Although I keep saying that, not too many plants, but let me fi figure this out later. I guess the next logical course of action would be to just move things that are not meant to be here away first. This is another skindapsis. This is like, Becoming one. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Oh, whoa, whoa. <gasps> no, I made a mess. I made a mess. Oh my gosh. This is really annoying. This is annoying. Oh my gosh. Now there's a plant that I have in mind because this is getting pretty good top light. So maybe something that is a bit more rosette is okay over here. So let's see if this will work. Well, this is a different Bakia that I really love. Oh my gosh, okay. I wonder how this looks on camera. Let me, let me come around and see. Get this out of the way first. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm not super crazy, but it's not terrible either. So let me see if I can put another Diffenbachia below that, a shorter one. Yeah, that does not work out here. Let me play around with it a bit more. So I do like this glass here. Let me clean this as we talk. I really like this here because it's got a nice reflective quality to it. Thought before that I would put like a Fetonia or something in it to let it grow, but I have not really had the chance to do that. Uh, but I still am going to keep it here just because it's, it looks pretty nice glowing in there. That's it's my name on it. S for Sean. Let me see if this fits here. Yeah, but the mirror will double the light. And then you just want to start using the larger plants. This one, I kind of I was at a loss of where to place this. Um, let me see. Would that be better here? Okay. Hmm, I'm always stepping back to see, you know, I kind of like this somewhere else because this was too low. I wanted a bit of height. Now this would be nice over here. A bit dramatic with that big leaf, don't you think? Although there is one problem with this. The problem is that it would smother, it would block the view of other plants. Let me see. What if I move this over here? Okay, first of all, this one leaf, it's gotta go. I'm, I'm on a roll here, so I'm just gonna use like my office scissors, but normally you should use a sterilized shears for this. Hmm, let me see if I like, if I like that. I will be sitting right in front of it, so it, people will not be able to see it. Let me see if I place it a bit higher up. Now this is too high, I think. This would have been a perfect place for it. Let me see. I mean, I do really like it. So this is a Vechii hybrid. I really kind of like it here, but something about it is a bit off. Now, those two are too similar in height. Not crazy about it. Man, what am I gonna do with that? I guess it just cannot belong here. It just wasn't the right plant. Sorry, we gave it a try. Now for this corner here, I had in mind to use an Apishkia. This one kind of need a bit of repotting because there's a lot of plant material here. But, uh, let's see. How's that? That's looking pretty good.
because you have the apishke over there and you have one over here so it's kind of a bit of a juxtaposition now i managed to find this one plant here let me see if it's worthy of being styled here this is actually quite pretty yeah i don't think i mind it here at all and i'm not gonna give it a cover pot yet because it is a little bit tucked in the back so you can't really see the pot but later on i think for a lot of these pots we would have to use something decorative uh, this one i'm a little bit concerned because it's got a new leaf coming along the way yeah you want to make sure the leaf have enough room to unfurl. So I just spent like the last 15 minutes repotting this. This was actually attached to another mother plant, but it's got a lot of roots already. I prepared this a while ago in one of my videos, I think. I think this is all right. Now the leaf is actually facing up right now because it is getting top light from where it was before. And I think over time, when you have them grown in a situation like this, it will start facing forward towards us. So the leaf would look a little bit more like this but it needs like a few weeks to adjust to the light level because this is where the light is coming from. I found another one. This is also another Plumenii. Look how pretty it is. And there's a pot here. So let me try see if this works. It's a bit of a cheating, but stick this in here. And then, voila. This is so much better. Let me, yeah. I might actually even put both of them here. Do I want to do that? Let's see. This looks beautiful so far. Oh man, um, that pot might be a little bit, a little bit big. It feels, felt like an elephant in the room, uh, but it is the right idea. Let me find another pot. Let's see. Let's see if this works. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Let me move this here. I quite like that there's so many leaves here, but this one actually needs to really uh, kind of look down a bit more. Do you know what I mean? It will be such a beautiful uh, shape here if this will only look down. So give it a bit of time, I think. I've got two anthuriums here. I actually just repotted it. This one here had a lot of root rot. What is that sound? Oh, is that a pish? Yeah. Um, this one had root rot, so I moved it to terracotta pot. And this one also had slightly overwatering issues. You can tell from the leaf here that if the leaves do this, like there's the yellowing line with the crisp, and the crisp feels like it's mushy and it's not dry, it is a little bit overwatered. So I've moved it into terracotta pot, and hopefully they will do well here. Let me see, do I want to put this up here? This is a little bit high up, isn't it? But if I put it here, it's just going to be too too low of a light. So maybe maybe this will be my anthurium little corner. So these are cheap anthuriums, by the way. I have more expensive ones on the balcony. They kind of require uh, more maintenance, although I haven't been really on top of my care lately. They have been a little bit overwatered still. I, I probably need to do some rescuing again, but that's the problem with mini anthuriums. I just keep rescuing them and then they do well and then they, they went downhill and they do well again. And yeah, I'm actually <laughs> a bit tired of that process, but they require diligence and uh, they don't like water. They really hate to be overwatered and I tend to overwater my plants. So this might be okay for this anthurium here. Yeah, I did not like that the anthuriums are in twos. So where possible, try to keep your plant in odd numbers. So maybe this one might have to go solo over here. And this one will find another place for it. All right, so I took a pretty long break. I had lunch and then I went to the gym and now I guess it's evening and I will continue with the styling process. So within that three or four hours that I was gone, this actually flopped over a little bit. I guess it was cut off from the main plant. It did have some roots, but I think a lot of the nutrients and water were being supplied by the, the main root ball down below. And also, this is a little bit lower humidity, so it is losing a bit of moisture in the leaves, but hopefully this will take off fine. Usually they will do okay. It just needs time to get adjusted, but it will be a bit wilty for the remaining few days, maybe. Now I do need some kind of filler plant that can take low light. And this is a bit rosette, this Aglaonema rotundum tiger, that's the name. 
And we have a video on how we propagated this. So this is from our video. Look at how beautiful it is. Uh, I'm just gonna leave that here for now. This will, this will take the low light really beautifully. This plant will actually give you the, those extremely electrifying pink stripes when you give it low light. So this is the right spot for it. This here is a begonia. It is a little bit crisping because I left it to dry out a little bit too for, uh, too long. But then as you can see, the baby leaves are starting to come out from here. So this is going to do quite okay. And I might actually put it, let me see. Perhaps something like this is fine. It is getting a bit of light back here. So this is going to do okay. Got a philodendron bark in here. Didn't know where to put it. So beautiful. Let me see if I can leave it out here in the back. A little bit. It's gonna style it a little bit, making sure the leaves are facing the, the most light possible. This way around. Yeah, this is much better. I quite like that the light is hitting the leaves here of the Birkin. This is looking quite nice. This is the real challenge now. This is like super low light, and I do want something that can thrive there, but you know what? This Hoya Callistophylla is framing this so beautifully. So I'm just gonna leave it there for now. I might add another light bulb up there to shine on it. And then I've got a few plants here. Uh, gonna start adding a few color in here. Hmm, I quite like it. That the anthurium is not like in the front anymore. It's sort of in the back. I quite like it. I know it's probably very difficult for you to see, but from where I'm standing, it looks a little bit understated, but it looks quite nice. And then this is a highlight plant too. This is the, the challenge here, is that a lot of these plants, they actually like more light than we think. Yeah, maybe this is not going here. This is a beautiful painted lady uh, just placed in this pot. Yeah, this is a nice cover pot for it. I do want to give this anthurium just a little bit of height on this. This is a, what do you even call it, the base where it, where it collects water. Nice, giving it like a, like a, maybe a third of an inch in height. And it's very close to the light bulb, so I'm not sure if this will burn the leaf or not. But I think this will do for now. I quite like this. Yeah, I am strapped for low light plants, so that's going to be a challenge. I mean, this, the Peperomia, Octocifolia may not hate it. It may not. It's okay. The variegated ones actually like uh, bright light, almost like direct sunlight. But this one, the green form, should be okay here. I'm gonna try to move as much of the vines. Yeah, I'm trying to wiggle all of the, the vines towards the front to catch more light. And this is actually not so bad. Now this here, I really, really hope this works out. So I, f I found this, this was from our the McDowell propagation video. And this is one of the propagates. Look at how thick this trunk is. And I look below, there were two more active nodes that are coming out from this. So this is a very, very healthy plant. And I'm hoping that it would do well over here. So there's a lot of like heart-shaped leaf going on here. One is a Palmanii and one is a McDowell. But this is a little bit, just a little bit big. Let me see if I can chuck it below. Yeah, that wouldn't work. Hang on. There's another place more suitable for this plant. I mean, this is okay. I had just bought this from a market. Very cute, right? But this might be cute right over here. I feel like I needed more of these around just because they really add to like the look of the space. I might even place this a little bit in the back. Yeah. So you have a bit of glass here, a bit of glass here, and then I do still need some low light plants. I've got this fern here. It actually burnt up in direct sunlight, so we lost a few fronds, but new ones are coming along the way. This is one that I've seen in very, very deep shade, so this is gonna do okay. Although I should probably take out the weed around here, but let me do that another time because we're strapped for, strapped for time now. Let me see how well it'll do in the back. This is very low light but it is very beautiful against this um, leather lantern here. This is so nice. It is again getting very low light. Or another way that I can deal with this is to instruct the girls to help uh, bring this out once in a while because it is getting almost like no light back here to bring it out maybe during watering days and put it back here once a week and it should be okay. So this is one of the trick. If you have like low light, maybe just 
move the move the plants out during the watering but keep in mind not to stress it out if you put a plant out in like too much sun suddenly it'll like um it will feel what do you call it it will it might burn i mean it, it's just not used to that sudden uh dose of sunlight it's like when you're out tanning you know in the beach and someone yanked off your sunglasses you wouldn't like that right so same same logic I think this is all right. Let me, I do need something to give it uh, some cover pots and something here, but I feel like I don't want another plant here. I don't want that. Maybe, mm -hmm. let me see. Killing two birds with one stone. Maybe I could, could put some books here. Now I feel like this is not amazing here. And that is looking a little bit bare on the top here, but this is again, very, very low light. Let me, let me look around a bit more. I'm gonna give this a bit of support with a bit of twine. Don't tell anyone, this will be a little secret. As good as new. Now I'm very tempted to place this anthurium back there. I am very, very tempted. It would look so good, but it's, it's getting like no light. Look at that, with this, um, the curvature of this pot that is angular with that round, it finishes off so nicely and this is looking nice, but I think I'm gonna leave it as it is, like this. This is okay. Maybe this will do? This is the uh, Euphorbia. It's actually super cute, look at that. And this was actually under a shelf, so this was getting like very little light. So maybe this, for, for it, this is considered like an upgrade. Um, let's see, could I? Can I do that? Yeah, why not? Whoa, I never, I didn't know that this would, the vine would look so beautiful like this. Huh, I think we're good. I did, I realized that I didn't have any cover pot that size, so I'm gonna try to ignore. Besides, when I'm vlogging, I might be in front of that black pot anyways, but I do need to find some other cover pots here. Yeah, this will do. Yeah, this will do. Let me double check everybody. Pretend I'm sitting here, vlogging away. I don't know, what do you guys think? Uh, yeah. I'm gonna let this sink in because like this took half a day and I'm still like catching my breath and everything, but I'm gonna give you guys a follow up. All right, so <laughs> guys, welcome back. This is actually a few days later, but I did something silly. I got this like cable here. So now the camera is connected to this um, laptop so I can see everything live from here, which is gives me much better control over my content, over lighting, and I could see, you know, behind me a little bit better. And actually the reason why I'm getting this cable is because I'm planning to go live next year a little bit more from my studio. So I'll be able to be having more intimate moments with you guys to, and to like do more of these kinds of vlogs. So just do talking heads. Uh, so I'm very excited about this. I was looking at myself in the, in the screen here and this is gonna pretty much change everything about the channel. So there'll be a lot of contents here. And as you can see, it's actually nighttime here. It's like 10 p.m., super late. And I've got a few more things to do in this room. Uh, first and foremost, I noticed this has been hanging here for like the past few days. And actually it looks really good over here. It looks really good draped over the side here. Let me see, let me see. Okay, there you go. And I really have to uh, uh, watch over this area because some of the air plants here are drying out a little bit much. Some of them are wet for too long. So I've really got to keep an eye out for the next few days. I've got two weeks until I go to Thailand. So I've got time to kind of train the girls and get a gauge. And the worst case scenario, I mean, if after I came back from my holiday, I could just, you know, rehab things, move things around, bring in new plants. That's, that's always something that can happen. And I do enjoy rescuing plants in case you haven't noticed. So it's okay if this doesn't work out so well, as long as it doesn't die completely off, I will be okay with it. This leaf, I actually tied it up before and it was working okay. And I do have some more things to do. I did have these decorations. This is like where I realized some of these trinkets can come in handy. This is super cute, let me show you that. Um, I got this in, I don't know if this is gonna focus 
focus, focus. These are like little houses. They're made of wood. I think I got them in, was it Chiang Mai or something? I can't remember. But I think this will be nice like in here. Maybe one over here, one down here by the, yeah. Here, so I've got like little, little houses on the shelf. So when I go on holiday this time, I know to get more of these kinds of trinkets so I can play around with more styling. So maybe 2024 would be the year that I play with a bit more styling. Um, by the way, there, over here, this one leaf is not doing so well. It's getting like super low light. But actually back here, a, a, a small indoor pre could live here, te technically speaking, like grow up or maybe like a, like a monstera or a plant on a moss pole so the moss pole can uh, you know, the plane climb up against this wall here, getting backlit by this light. So like maybe like Raphidophora tetrasperma, if you can see here, would be uh, pretty good. Sorry, it's getting a bad habit too. I'm like looking over here instead of the camera because it's like, I don't know, it's a force of habit, I guess, but I'll do my best. Oh, and this one leaf, this, uh, I don't know if you can see here, this one leaf is unfurling. It was just a sharp point before, but now it's starting to unfurl. One more thing I want to do before I let you go. Da -da 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 -da. Excuse me. <laughs> I've got a trick up my sleeve. Ta -da. So can you see that purple light that came on? It can also do weird things. Let me show you. It can do like, like it can change color. Oh, I quite like this, this color. Quite like that. And I've got a trick up my sleeve. So I've got these like light, they actually charge. I really like that blue, how that's bouncing off this shelf. So this is like, this is like a nice color that I like. Now I'm just, that's just gonna be in the way. <laughs> Let me see, maybe somewhere up here. Somewhere. Yeah, that's gonna be okay. And then finally this one, I think a bit of red is okay. That's a bit cheating, but you get the point. Let me see if I, how I feel about this setup here. So it's got like that blue and then it slowly fades to like a green and then a bit of an orange. So it's got like that gradient. So you just turn on a ring light from over there. So maybe that's a little bit better now. I don't know, this is giving me a bit of a holiday cheer as well, this kind of uh, setup. But it's the beginning, it's a good start. Um, I kind of filmed this in like, a rush, I guess, because things are pretty hectic now, just so you know. I just came back from Penang and there's a lot of videos. I have videos up until April to edit. So they're all like saved up in here. And then with our my soap brand, I have a soap business that I run, uh, very proud of it. It is finally uh, getting produced by a factory. So we will be scaling that up like no tomorrow. So 2024, me and my family, my family decided to take over that business, by the way. So we're going to be working very closely together and bringing it to the market, distribute it, hopefully worldwide. So if there's any export opportunities, I will let you guys know. Uh, but those things are taking up a lot of my energy, my physical time, my mental energy. And for someone like me, I have a bit of an ADHD, like I envision things in the future. I'm a designer, I'm a creative person. So when these kinds of opportunities are given to me, they're thrown at me. They, they work in different ways in my mind. Like they become more complicated. I design them, I envision possibilities, opportunities and, and things like that. So it, it's a ma magical explosion that happens in my head. So I think very differently from most people. So it has not been an overwhelming journey this year and this end of year has been crazy busy and I want to thank you again this is like maybe my third or fourth year in youtube and you guys have stuck around i've gotten some new viewers lately and um, next year more travel videos and i will be filming from home maybe more live sessions from here and more care tips more propagation but yeah good things to come next year and i hope that you guys have really good new year's resolutions yourself and everything's growing well in your homes i guess i've run out of things to say uh i guess i will see you in the next episode and thank you again uh take care now bye bye
Thank you, Patreon members, for supporting the channel. Should you consider joining as a member, the Patreon link is Sean from Only Plants. It can also be found in this video description. I've started producing bonus contents for members. These include plant hauls, plant shopping, and mini bite-sized adventures. The same bonus contents will also be unlocked for you if you join to become a YouTube member of the channel. There is a monthly membership fee as small as a cup of coffee a month. Simply go to Only Plants channel page and click join. Your contributions help me grow the channel, do better content, and have a better quality of life. For that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart.